One thing we find interesting is that the clean economy as we define it consists of a large number of relatively mature, slower growing, conventional environmental pursuits, whether it's wastewater treatment or mass transit, which reduces carbon use and so on. But then there's this layer of very fast growing renewable energy, kind of flashy energy, smart grid, and energy efficiency activities. Those things are growing extremely rapidly. These are the wind uh, industry, the solar PV industry, smart grid. All of these things are growing rapidly and I think are you know, ultimately uh, should be of great interest to the country in thinking about the future policy because that's where job growth will come and innovation will come. Another thing, the, those segments and, and the clean economy in general is providing a, uh, production jobs, providing a lot of manufacturing and export, which uh, is useful to this country right now. And that's a, another part uh, that we think is extremely uh, uh, important in our work. An issue with the clean economy is it is growing very rapidly in some of the newer you know, much discussed uh, renewable energy, smart grid, energy efficiency areas, the so-called clean tech bundle of segments, but those remain pretty small thus far. So while I think the intuition and promise of large-scale job creation is uh, warranted, in the present day scale of these industries means that they'll be, you know, moderate contributors for the next three, four years or five years and won't immediately be able to offset the massive uh, job uh, losses that we've seen in the last recession. The next uh, generations of new technologies that will grow uh, require investments now to make inventions and, and do tech transfer. So we need both to invest more, but we also need to do it in smarter ways that foster partnerships between the public sector, universities, government labs, and so on. That's, we've talked a lot at uh, Brookings about uh, energy invest in innovation hubs, ARPA-E, an important institution, uh, and other different models for uh, doing R&D. And then our last thing, I think our work shows the importance of regions uh, and the variation between regions in this country and that means we need in all of our policy at the federal and state level to think about regional variation and providing flexibility to regions to plot their course.